You said Papa <laughs> Good morning and welcome back to my journey trying to cross Latvia on my unicycle along the Baltic Forest Trail. Today I'm leaving Riga. I've been here for two days, staying in Mara's apartment with her two cats and her very sweet dog Mars. So, need to leave the city, but I'm not going to be leaving alone. And for the next few days, I'm going to be riding with this chap. <laughs> that some of you might know if you've been following his, his TikToks. So. Yeah, I'm a uh, big TikToker, making my mom proud of me, you know? <laughs> So, I'm Silva, I'm French, but for the last uh, 10 years of my life I've been living in Estonia and so during this summer I took the challenge to go from France to Estonia with my unicycle. As I say, it's my way to connect my roots land in France to my lovely heart's land, greatest country in the world in Estonia. Like so far I've been doing roughly 2,300 or 400 kilometers. The goal is to do a total of 3,000 kilometers over the overall trip. So while we've got an opportunity to weigh our gear, we're both kind of curious to see how much stuff we're actually taking and kind of compare together. Android one, yeah, and it was minus 65. 36. 36, yeah. 86, okay. 59.3. So all my gear, including water and food and the unicycle and my helmet and my backpack, uh, it was 28.5 kilograms. And what was yours? 36. Yeah, so you're about eight kilos heavier. Yeah. Which, to be honest, with a 36, so that's, that's pretty good. With a 36, pretty good. I've never toured with anyone else on a unicycle, so I'm, I'm curious to see how it works, and especially with the different size wheels. I suspect there's going to be a bit of a discrepancy in speed, but we're keen to, to try and make it work for a few days. We just want to get into the forest. I want to get out of the city. Yeah, <laughs> so do I. Let's get out of the city. Ready. So we're attempting to go through the old town to get to the river. But yeah, the issue with the old town, I mean, it's not an issue, it's beautiful, but the issue on the unicycle is all the cobbles. So you end up just like bouncing around all the time. Nice. Yeah, it's cool. It's a blustery one today because I've been riding in the forest this whole trip. I haven't really experienced high winds, but it's just getting used to it again, being sort of battered around on the unicycle. Ah, that looks good actually, it looks quite smooth. <laughs> that yeah, that sand stuff is so dodgy. This is going to be fun. Uh, okay. So no is the question where do I mount again? Okay. Go for it. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> okay, I'll give it one more try. Yeah. Otherwise we just won't come Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you can do it. Because <laughs> if you believe in your dream, you can do anything! You said, <laughs> You feel prepared to do 200 kilometers on this? Hell yes, <laughs> I was born ready. Our plan for the next few days was to ride west together towards Koldiga. Now, for those of you paying attention, you'll realize we were pretty much going back the way Sylvan had already come. Seeing as it's such a rarity for two touring unicyclists to intersect, he decided he'd alter his route to join me on the trail. Once we reach Koldiga, I'd continue riding south to the Lithuanian border, and his plan was to load his unicycle onto an inflatable kayak and continue his trip to Estonia that way. Which is absolutely mental, but that's a story for him to tell on his own channel. Anyway, for now, we weren't thinking about any of that. Okay. Rather, just trying to navigate the terrain of the forest trail the best we could. Sand, sand, sand. <laughs> That's gonna work my cardio! <laughs> oh god, you clearly see like the line of the zoom 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 zoom. Yeah, you see both of ours, yeah. yeah. Just like wibbly wobbly. Yeah, some of these tracks, they're not they're not easy. Especially for Sivar. It's quite impressive that he's even attempting some of this stuff on the 36 so it's, I mean it's the reason why. I decided to get the smaller wheel for this trip. I feel I'm gonna lack of footage. It's really hard to film with this stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> bumpy bumpy. Loved in. 
Well, we've been making pretty good progress today. I think we've done about 20 kilometers, which is something like this. I think um, it's pretty good. It's been pretty good. I'm quite happy with that, especially it's considering it's 2 p.m. And we're just approaching the Baltic Sea. Oh, wow. Okay, there's some serious wind here, which I guess makes sense. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> oh, that's gonna be fun! <laughs> Woo! Amazing. So this is the Baltic Sea and we're going to be following this one for another like 20 kilometers or something. It's going to be cool. So this is quite an interesting section of the uh, Mejtake. The route goes like along a cycle path down about 3.8 kilometers and then it comes back on the beach. I'm going to push out this way on the cycle path and Sylvain's going to just, just going to chill here. I'm just going to take a chill. I'm going to edit my video. With my 36, it will be just yeah. too much of a pain in the ass to ride on a, on a beach. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm committed to seeing the whole route. So while I would love to just kind of continue down, keep making progress, this is part of it. So we're going to see what's, what's this direction. I'm effectively going the wrong way now. <laughs> I'm still following the route. I consider just skipping this section, but the point of this challenge is to do the whole Mojtaka route. Uh, regardless of where it takes me. So while it would be very easy just to kind of keep going down the beach, I, I, I have to. <laughs> like mentally I wouldn't be happy if I didn't, didn't complete this, um, just out of laziness, you know. So we're going to push down the cycle path and then the official route goes on the beach. The sand feels okay. It certainly feels softer than that section of beach that I rode in New Zealand. Uh, but I guess we just need to give it a go. 3.5 kilometers this way. Let's try. I mean, there's certainly a lot of resistance, um, but it is possible. It just the wheel doesn't really glide over the sand, it just kind of sinks. Yeah, this is going to be a tough ride. <laughs> if I just stay where the waves are, I think this is going to be fine. And I'm sure all this salt water is going to be amazing for my bearings, but there we go. This is part of the trip. finding really quite difficult is the strong wind coming to my right. I'm having to like bend to try and keep this unicycle balanced. There's also a bit of a camber obviously that dips down to the sea. So I'm like super skew whiff trying to ride but this is the only place that it's actually possible to ride on the beach because it's uh, the sand is packed hard enough. I'll ride like this back to uh, Silva and then I'll, I'll make a decision after this because while it's just about possible for me to rise I think he's going to have a very hard time Made it back I think that was about 3.5 kilometers on the uh, sand The thing is like it's okay like it's, really, it's quite solid right by the waves Yeah but occasionally like the waves come in and you're just like riding in the water and like the difficulty is all the wind you'll know that like the wind is like still on like kinked the whole time uh, and trying to have like a decent speed but also being like completely bent over is just so difficult I think it's just like a little bit of sand on the disc. I don't think it's fine. I think I've had my fill of uh, sea sand riding. We're going to ride along these these paths. This isn't a pure Baltic forest trail, uh, but I just don't want to be riding on the on the sand for another 20 kilometers. We're also very hungry, so we're just going to push on another sort of five kilometers or so uh, and get to like a, a shop 
and then we can stock up a bit for, for the days ahead as well. We've got some food, just not, not everything we need. Foto, video. Как вас зовут? Регина. Рига, Регина. Регина? Да. Uh, uh, меня зовут Эдвард. Эдвард. Uh, Сильва. Сильва. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. С этими грибами надо, смотри. Очень вкусно. Да, они чуть-чуть mm. горькие, они mm. лечат желудок. Mm. И съедят сырыми. Mm -hmm. Мальчишки, вы молодец. Спорт mm шиз -hmm. грация. Музыка грация. Yeah, I I have uh, two girls with this uh, baby. We need no Ukraine, no Odessas. Vasya, Germania. Yeah. What? I am going to photo. Сколько лет дочке? Дочке? Вот ей надо жених такой, как ты. Same age, Я, Олеся, ну-ка вместе. О, спорт, лайф! Скажи, кто-то есть? Это Баровикс. Самый ну, yeah. ценный гриб. Шантхель mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. uh, is good, we can get some go to forest. Это блуберри, там ну, всякие ягоды, да? Блуберри. Это смазка. Yeah. Бизнес. Это ну, подожди, наверх такой. Видишь? Потом. Oh, oh, yeah. Красивый. А ты молодец по-русски. Uh, uh, я uh, живу uh, в Бишкек, uh, в Кыргызстан. Да? Ничего себе! Да, нет! Это же СССР! Да, это же СССР! Бишкек, это же красиво! Вообще! Я купил! Это же... А какие ты хочешь? Это шампиньон! Шампиньон? А это лисички, можете просто порезать и... Это. Да, 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 Регина, Рига. Регина. Я. Регина. Нет зубов. Сейчас сделаю зубы. Супер модель. Пока, пока. Я есть авиатор, авиация, инструктор. We're currently pushing through Yurumala, uh, but to be honest, we're looking just to get out the other side and find somewhere quiet to camp. I'm hoping we can find somewhere by the coast, but it's seriously windy today, so we might have to be slightly inland. But we shall see. Yeah, the spot where I was, like, just before uh, the night I came to Riga was just so nice, but I was like another 30 kilometer away. Not gonna get there. Before we stopped for the night, we thought it might be a smart idea to ask a cafe for water. It was here that the reach of Sylvan's online presence became apparent. I've been seeing you on TikTok recently. This is very possible, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going from France to Estonia. Yeah, I know. How's the trip going? It's lovely. I'm having so much fun. I'm really loving it. That's Lat cool. Latvia has been wonderful so far. Have you solved your problem with the sleeping bag? There was my first night below 10 degrees in a while. As you can see on my face, I didn't sleep very much. So clearly, I need to get a better sleeping bag. I got this vest. Oh. And because I did not have many nights when I was cold, I think I was more stressed of anticipation than actual problem. So I got this vest, which hopefully gonna help me to keep me warm at night. Well, and I wish you luck. Yeah, we'll be for sure. Thank you for. Oh yeah. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Have a good trip. Sveiki. Wow! Yeah, I think so. We 
because Sylvan's got a um, hammock and I've got a tent. We need to find a spot that's going to work for both of us. Uh, but I'm hoping we can find somewhere here because we're right by the sea, right by this beach. Um, it would be amazing if we could make it work. That's good. Yeah. As you've seen during the series, with unicycle touring, you're severely limited with what you can carry. Out here, we've both got the bare essentials of what we need to be able to camp and cook. But what if we weren't so limited, and were instead on a car camping trip? Perhaps then we may have packed something like the new AC200L from Bluetti, who are kindly sponsoring this video. The AC200L is a 2048 watt hour power station designed for use at home and on the go. There are many different ways you can charge it, including your car's 12 volt DC output, solar panels, or simply a standard wall outlet. With its two convenient carry handles, it's easy to pick up and throw in the back of a vehicle to take on a long camping trip. Compared to traveling on a unicycle, car camping allows you to pack much more. So if you want to head outside, but still have the convenience of long lasting mains like power, the AC200L would be a great option. As an experiment, I'm curious to see if the AC200L can handle making a coffee. So I've got a grinder here. I'm gonna whack that in. For outputs, it has two DC, four 230 volt AC, two USB A's and two USB C's that can provide up to 100 watts each. We're gonna turn on the AC and then we're gonna give this a go. Using the electric coffee grinder was no issue at all as this only pulled around 125 watts but could it cope with the higher draw from a kettle? Yeah, of course it could. From the readout, I could see that the kettle pulled around 2,700 watts, which it dealt with perfectly. I'd say that was a very successful test. And when you get back home, with its 2,400 watt AC fast charging capability, the power station can replenish from zero to 80% capacity in just 45 minutes. So if you think the AC200L could be right for you, please click the top link in my description to find out more. Thank you, Bluetti. Now back to the video. Yeah, it's going to be so interesting, actually, to see our video in a sense that we're going to make the same adventure from two different angles. Yeah, it's just two different perspectives. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, yeah. I think yeah, it's no. so interesting. Yeah, I've I mean, never had this, you know, to be with someone else who is, like, really committing to make some cool video as well. And uh, this is very interesting because it's, the things that you film are totally different than the one I film. I'll tell you what, those mushrooms were incredibly tasty. Mixed in with like pasta and carrots, it's made for like a brilliant meal. No, it was a really good day today. We made pretty good progress. Tomorrow we'll be following the coast for a few miles and then we're cutting inland following the, uh, the Mejtaka, the Baltic Forest Trail. And I'm curious to see how we fare. Sylvan did very, very well like on the, the sort of rough terrain today. Like I wouldn't want to have a 36 or on this stuff. And it's, yeah, it's just been really nice to have some company. You know, I, I enjoy riding alone. I enjoy traveling alone. But it's just a different dynamic traveling with someone. And I'm, I've, yeah, just looking forward to the next few days riding with him. Yeah, OK, it's 10.30. I'm very tired. I'm going to get some sleep. And I'll see you in the morning as we continue riding across Latvia. Good night. A big thank you to all these lovely people for supporting my adventures. And if you'd like to see your own name here and watch the videos early, please consider supporting on Patreon.